Data storytelling is not the same as data visualization. The fundamental difference is simple. Data visualization shows while storytelling explains. Data visualization makes your data informative, whilst data storytelling makes your data transformative. Storytelling takes visualization a step, if not many steps further, by adding context, meaning, and direction through a narrative structure, and I'll of course go through how you can create your own narrative structure later in the video to show you how you can master data storytelling skills. And just quickly, for those of you who are new here, my name is Mo Chan and I work as a data and analytics manager and I have over six years of experience working with complex big data in the financial services industry. Data storytelling combines data, visuals, and narrative to communicate a complete message, to guide the audience through a coherent, structured narrative with context. Visualization is just one component of storytelling. It's the narrative aspect that adds the context that will transform your simple data point into meaningful insights, which is why I said earlier that storytelling is transformative versus visualization, which is informative. Some basic narrative structures you could use if you don't already have one could be the following ones. Beginning, middle, end, past, present, future, problem, solution, benefit, what, so what, now what. They're all pretty self-explanatory and I've used them all and they work really well. Employers love professionals with data storytelling skills because of one main reason, business impact. Data visualization is great for helping teams quickly understand key metrics, but storytelling is the one that drives action, changes opinions, and gets you your stakeholder buy-ins. It's especially useful when you're trying to bridge the gap between technical information and non-technical audiences, which are the types of audiences you'll have mostly, as obviously not everyone will be data scientists, engineers, or analysts in your organization. I mentioned before that business impact is the number one reason companies love employees who have data storytelling skills, and by business impact, I mean the following five things. Storytelling creates engagement and persuasion, as it captures attention by engaging your audience emotionally, making the data personally relevant. Whenever I present to my stakeholders, I always try and put myself in their shoes by asking myself, if I were them, what insights would I like to see? What insights would help me with my business goals? The moment you can make your audience personally relate to your data points, visuals, and insights is the moment you get their buy-in, no matter what your ask is. Storytelling enables evidence-based decisions as the primary benefit of it is its ability to provide the necessary context for making informed decisions. This context helps decision makers understand not just what the data shows, but why it matters and what actions should be taken. Data storytelling highlights the implication of data in a real-world context, making it easier to get to actionable conclusions. Storytelling improves organizational collaboration as it opens up a data-informed culture for everyone, technical and non-technical audiences. If you have the ability to increase data literacy amongst wider audiences, you are for sure a huge asset to your company as you're elevating other people's data skills and taking them on their very own data journeys. Enabling everyone in your organization to benefit from data insights is really important, which is why I want to show you Adverity, a data platform trusted by leading global brands and their data and marketing teams, and it's easy to see why. Their transformative data conversations will redefine how business and marketing teams interact with data, and by redefine, I mean moving way beyond static dashboards and delayed reports to intuitive, real-time dialogues and instant insights. Powered by conversational and agentic AI, data conversations allows you to ask questions about your data using simple, plain language to get instant answers, data visualizations, and actionable insights that you can save and share with others. It's like having the power of ChatGPT or Perplexity wired directly into your business data. As an analyst, this would free up my time from ad hoc requests and empower less technical teams to access and explore data on their own terms. 
a win-win for everyone. Think about it as a new way to interact with your data, moving away from SQL queries and BI tools to natural conversations where you get your answers immediately. I've said it many times before that AI will reshape the way we work and Adverity's data conversations is such a great example for how we can leverage AI to turn raw data into actionable insights much faster and with much less effort. If you and your team want to turn raw information into business-critical data-driven decisions, then I highly recommend you check out Adverity using my link in the description below. And a huge shout out to Adverity for partnering with me to make this video happen. And let's continue with some more ways storytelling can create meaningful business impacts. Storytelling also makes complex data accessible by combining large volumes of information into clear, actionable, and most importantly, engaging ideas. This is especially useful for presenting information to a more senior audience who need to make quick decisions. Reports and charts alone oftentimes can fail to capture the interest of your stakeholders. And the last point, storytelling drives strategic action across the organization. When you present data through a compelling narrative, it's so much easier to drive strategic action as you can justify the need for change or highlight potential impacts, align teams around common goals or uncover opportunities for improvement or new strategies that might go unnoticed in conventional analysis. I said earlier that data storytelling sits at the intersection of three key pillars, data, visuals, and narrative. And what I wanna focus on now is the narrative, given I'm sure you're all very, or at least somewhat familiar with data and visuals. The question I'll answer now in this part of the video is why apply a narrative structure to data? There are two main reasons why. One, to provide sufficient context around your insights, to make them understandable, and two, to add a causal structure that connects the information leading up to your insights. You can think of the latter as the emotional value to your insights, helping your audience engage with the data, convince them of the importance of your idea, and therefore urging them to take action. A big mistake I see technical people people with um, analytical mindsets make is overlooking the emotional element, assuming that facts and data speak for themselves, which they don't, or that data impacts everyone as it impacts them, which it doesn't. In any workplace setting, each person will have their own unique background, motivation, and skill set, which is why you should always ask yourself this. Why should people care? If you can answer this question, you've adapted a narrative structure to your data insights. And here's three ways you could do this. Cole Nassbaumer, Naflik, is the author of Storytelling with Data and uses the classic structure of plot twist ending. The plot answers the question, what is the context that is necessary? The twist answers the question, what is interesting about what the data shows? And the ending answers the question, what action should your audience take? Another structure you could use would be to follow the structure of Jonathan Schwabisch, the author of Better Data Visualizations, who uses an axis stretching from annotation to narrative to story. Annotation includes adding text to charts to explain the content and the workings. Narrative consists of guiding the audience through a series of visualizations. And the story comes from adding emotion and the climax to the narrative to make the information personally relevant to really hook the audience. You could also take a leaflet out of Brent Dyke's effective data storytelling book and use Freitag's pyramid to create a narrative structure including the following steps. Setting, hook, rising insights, central insight, and resolution. The setting is the beginning of your story. It provides context to the central insight. For example, you could show repeating or cyclical patterns from past periods to establish a baseline for your audience. The hook is the spark that ignites your story, and it should answer the question, what changed? You need to focus on highlighting the deviations from the usual behavior of your dataset. For example, you notice the sales figures have fluctuated significantly from the expected value in the last month, last quarter, or last year. The rising insights should focus on the context around the change you noticed. A good question to ask here would be, why did the change happen? Then the central insight 
answers the questions, why should people care? And you can think of this as the aha moment in your story. A common mistake I notice people make in their aha moments on their way to constructing their stories is making the data the focal point of the data story, when in reality, storytelling works much better if you make people the focal point of your data story. Why? Because we are selfish creatures and we will ultimately only care about what impacts us rather than what impacts the data. For example, instead of highlighting a huge dip in sales figures, highlight the people who are impacted by the huge dip in sales figures. Loss of jobs or reduced or no bonuses due to a large sales decrease calls people to an action way quicker and easier than purely focusing on the large decrease in sales. And finally, the resolution of your story should answer the question, what do we do about it? By this point, you should have convinced your audience about the importance of your findings, so it is now crucial to complete your story by discussing and agreeing next steps. Without actionable next steps, your data story is not really even a story, just another nice to have insight. And that's all from me for today. Please remember this. Data visualization is not the same as data storytelling, as visualization is only a component of storytelling, which sits at the intersection of three key pillars, data, visuals, and narrative. Adding a strong narrative structure to your data story creates the personal, emotional connection between your data information or insights and your audience, which in turn gets you the stakeholder buy-ins to drive strategic actions. I really hope you liked this video, and if you did, don't forget to like and subscribe and check out all of the resources at mochan.info. If you want to see more content like this, feel free to check out these videos right here. Thanks so much for taking just a little time out of your day to watch this, and I shall see you in the next one.